and konnichiwa. Today we're talking about parenting goals for multiracial children. I don't plan to go into how do we raise good moral children, but specifically how do we pass on cultures that are not American culture and language and all of that. I'm going to go through three different goals that I had. Two are pretty easy for me just because of the circumstances that I have, but We'll talk through all of those and stick with me till the end because I think I've figured out how I want to structure the playlists on this channel. And so if you're looking for certain things, I want to guide you to where you should look for future videos that I'm planning to put up. And if you have inputs, if there are certain things you want to hear or want to know, comment and let me know. So I'm Amy, for those of you that we haven't met yet, Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. I am a mom of two half Japanese boys. I wanna talk about the parenting goals that I have and I have a full-time corporate job during the day and so I'm not home with them all the time and everyone's circumstance is different and so your goals might be different than mine. But today I really wanna talk about what has gone through my brain as I was having children, as I've been raising my children of what I really want to pass on to them and what I think is important. And again, that could be completely different for you. I just want to share my thoughts in case that is helpful for any of you, in case that resonates with any of you. And I really want to hear what works and doesn't work for you as you all think through similar things. We all know parenting takes a village and a huge village at that. And I am thankful for the friends and family that are part of my village, but I would love for you all to join me and be my village as well. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know when I've posted new things. Also want to say up front that I am not an expert by any means of raising kids, raising multi-ethnic kids, any of that, but I promise you that I will be authentic in my journey, that I am bringing you what has worked for me, what has not worked for me, my thought process, all of that. I mean, authenticity, look, I'm, <laughs> I'm here without makeup in front of this camera that can be seen by the whole world. And my hair is a mess because it's a work day and it is after a full work day. And I'm in a Mario t-shirt because my children love Mario and, you know, <laughs> that is pandemic life. We are working in all sorts of clothes. So this is me being authentic and just sharing my thoughts with you. So I have three big goals as I was thinking about what I wanted to pass on to my children as I had my first boy in my belly. The third one is the more in-depth one, so I will save that for the end. The first one is passing on Japanese traditions, and that comes a little bit easier for me. I say it's a little easier because my parents are from Japan and we see them fairly often. They are a short flight away and my mom comes up quite a bit to help us, not during the pandemic unfortunately, but she does on a normal basis come up to help us quite a bit and so my kids have a lot of exposure to that. She's been very good about celebrating special holidays, having those special foods because that's what she was raised with and that's what I was raised with. And so those actually come pretty easily for my children. And my kids actually go to Japanese school, uh, which is two hours on one day of the week. We chose only one day of the week because I just can't do any more than the that. The second goal I had was I would really like them to be able to eat Japanese food. That might seem silly, but I love Japanese food. And so if they didn't eat it, I would be really, really sad. And thankfully, my husband is also someone that eats everything and loves Japanese food. So I, I got very fortunate or maybe I would have been selective. I don't know. I don't know. But thankfully, um, all my family are good eaters and they love everything, actually, all, a lot of foods. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, and again, my mom plays a big part in this in that she cooks amazing Japanese food. That is what I was raised with and I love it. So I cook a lot of it too. And when she comes up in the times that she does, she cooks for us and then she stores our freezer, which is amazing. Thank you, mom. Thank you, thank you. And so we can have Japanese food even when she is not here. And there's an abundance of Japanese 
restaurants around us in California. So the exposure is plenty. So I was not afraid of that. The third goal that I had is the big one, language. Language in that I wanted them to be able to not only understand what they heard, but I wanted them to be able to read and write as well. Let me talk about where I think they are, both of my kids, on each of those things. Hearing and understanding, I think they are actually quite good. They can understand most of what I say, most of what my parents say, and if they don't understand something, they'll ask, which is a great thing. So we can talk about it and they can learn for the future. Speaking is a little bit harder, but I know they can do it because they default to that with my parents. They don't with me. They default to English and that's partly on me because I also default to English a lot of the time, but I know they can do it because I hear them doing it with my parents because they know that they are so much better with Japanese than with English. I will also add that I saw a dramatic difference before our trip to Japan and after our trip to Japan. We were there for three weeks a few years ago and they were just immersed in it. They heard it in every street, shop, everywhere we went. And so they felt a lot more comfortable after that to speak and have confidence in their language skills because we're all a little self-conscious when we're learning a new language and you don't speak it all the time, right? But it's also one of those, if you don't use it, you lose it or you don't gain it in the first place. So I'm excited to see that they feel more comfortable with that. And they have also told me, mama, it's hard. And it totally is. I agree, it totally is to do this new thing but I wanna keep encouraging them to do it because they're actually pretty good when they do it. So that makes me very excited. Reading, they're pretty good with this too, uh, especially in the hiragana, which is the introductory basic Japanese lettering system. And with that, they can read quite a bit. So we have this karuta game and I'll make a video on this so stay tuned, but they have these kinds of cards and people are finders and there is a reader. And so when the reader reads this, this corresponds to this, you're supposed to find it. And my kids volunteer to read and they can. Is it perfect all the time? No, it's not. But the fact that they want to do it and the fact that they can read it mostly and understand it and even catch their own mistakes when they make a mistake sometime, that is huge and that is a big win in my book. And you'll notice that I love learning through play and learning through things other than workbooks, even though we do workbooks too. So don't worry about that. <laughs> but you'll see a lot of games that we play or toys that we play with or things that we have around the house so that they can learn in a fun way. They also do classes with my mom virtually, and so they've been learning a lot of kanji, which is the characters, and I have been surprised at how much they know, and even my younger one knows a lot of the ones that my older one knows, which is a first grade level. So that excites my heart, and um, I hope that they keep it up, and I hope that this helps uh, my older one not be behind when he does go back to school and hopefully it's not just him that has Not been going to school and learning all the same things. So fingers crossed, but even if he is hopefully he can catch up and That is that writing is the hardest one the tiger mom in me has come out in the pandemic, especially at the beginning. I got Japanese workbooks. I had this desire to have them write at least two letters each day and two kanji characters each day. And that did not happen. As you can imagine, I was trying to limit the fights. And after a long day of work for me, trying to get dinner on the table, trying to get the kids to bed, that just kind of fell by the wayside um, a lot of days. We're trying to bring it back, but 
it is hard. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of things that need to get done. But it's also one of those important things to practice because you don't use it, you lose it. I noticed that even with myself, I have a hard time figuring out what the character is if I don't write in Japanese for a long time. I have a vague recollection of what it might look like, but it is hard for me to just write some of these things and have it come naturally because I don't write to people in Japanese very often. So I would like to foster this more for them and I will also talk more in future videos about the things that we do to promote this writing. One conversation that we had, um, my husband and I, before the kids were born is how do we talk to them? What language do we talk to them? I had grand plans of speaking entirely in Japanese to them from infancy through whatever. My husband was totally on board. He said, even if I don't understand, that's totally fine. Um, I think you can imagine that's not what has happened. I still try my best to remember, but do I still feel bad sometimes that my husband's the only one not understanding? Absolutely. I know he said it's okay, and so I still try to speak as much Japanese with them. Um, I have also told them when Dada's not here, we're always speaking Japanese. That again has not <laughs> worked all the time. They are much more comfortable in English when I get angry or when I need to really convey a message very clearly to them. It always becomes English. During the pandemic, it feels like there is a lot of English. Tell me I'm not alone. Please tell me I'm not alone. So that was an important conversation that we had. And bless my husband's heart, he tried so hard and is still trying to learn more Japanese each day. Um, before the kids were born, he tried to do um, some workbooks when we went to Japan. He tried to do all sorts of things. And then when I was pregnant with my first one, he was doing Rosetta Stone to try to learn more and more and more because he wanted to be part of it too. And unfortunately, um, we all know that kids pick up language so, so much faster than adults, uh, which is another reason why I wanted to do this early on because I wanted them to have the language to be able to connect with their grandparents and that side of their family. Also, that hopefully this will be an advantage in the future. Whatever they end up having as a career, having a multilingual skill is a big plus, I think. So I would like to give them that advantage. And that was my hope. So the Japanese school story will need to be inserted here. So for a little bit of background on me, um, I did share a little bit in the intro video so you can go um, listen to the heart and my story uh, video. But I went to Japanese school from elementary school through middle school and it was Saturdays all day. And they had every subject, basically, it was just like a regular day. They had uh, Japanese, the, the equivalent of English, right? It was the gr grammar, spelling, um, characters, all of that. Then you had math, you had history, you had geography, you had science, you had all sorts of different um, classes that you had to take. And so it was really a whole school day. If you were given the choice, you would say no, probably, I'm guessing, most of you. Um, I did not really have a choice, which is probably good because I probably would have said no to. Um, there are plenty of times that I did not enjoy it, but I did have some really good friends that I made and I still keep in touch with, and a lot of them went back to Japan. Um, so I get to see them sometimes if we go. So I'm very thankful for that, but at the time, I did not enjoy it. I mean, who would want to go to six days of school? Six full days of school. Am I right? Am I thankful for that now? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think there are other things that helped me be able to have the fluency that I have. 
um, including having relatives in Japan because I went back to Japan almost every single year, I think, until I hit high school and then I got super busy. But we went back almost every summer and for long periods of time. And so that exposure, I think, is crucial to the way that I turned out. And my children don't have that, so I was definitely very cognizant of ways that I could foster the language and being able to teach them all of the aspects, not just understanding what they heard. So that's where Japanese school came in for us. I thought it was very important that we send them to a Japanese school, even if it's only a few hours. They started going when they were three, so the usual preschool starting age. At that age, they have an almost all day program. And I'm actually really sad because my younger one is aging out of that, or actually has aged out of it um, during the pandemic. And so he hasn't been able to do that all day program, um, which I think is really, really helpful um, to be surrounded by Japanese, to be um, just immersed in it. And he hasn't been able to have that um, for a longer period of time, but I'm hoping that everything's still okay. We are still doing it in the pandemic, at least for my younger one. My younger one is in preschool, but preschool is out. Um, we have not had any sort of online classes available for him through his preschool and so he has been free roaming this whole year um, which has been hard for for all of us I think for a number of reasons but um, he's been a trooper he has been such a trooper and this was the one thing uh, that we felt was um, important for us to keep so we did quit for a while because the screen time was just hard and as you can imagine, sitting for two hours in a classroom setting for two hour stretches is really hard for a five-year-old. And so we quit uh, for a bit um, and then we brought it back because it was the one class that he had and it was once a week and we felt like this was important for him to have that learning. I will caveat with my mom was doing virtual lessons every day for an hour with them, going over kanji, going over kanji as characters for anybody that doesn't know, going over um, grammar. And then there was probably quite a bit of TV, but it was Japanese TV and you really can learn things <laughs> through TV sometimes, especially language. So um, that was one of the fun things that they did. Right, you stuck with me. And I promised a bonus at the end, sneak peek of how I'm going to structure my channel, right? So here we go. The first one is going to be focused on that language piece, and it is going to be called language learning. Again, all these are subject to change, but hopefully uh, the structure will be the same. But that will include things like games that we play, uh, workbooks that we do, toys that we play with, charts that are up things of that nature that help foster that learning. The second one is going to be called culture because I want that to incorporate videos on traditions, holidays, different exercises, cartoons, um, things that are very popular in Japan that I want my kids to know about or that are just fun trends or fun things that are happening that I think might be fun to share or important to know. So that'll be in culture. And then we come to food. Food, I love food as you might have picked up on. So we're gonna break that into two. The first one is going to be actual cooking videos. I love to cook, my mom loves to cook. And so we're gonna have recipes or anything that we cook is going to be on there with cooking or also called gyori because that means the dishes that you cook, it's the cooking process. The other one is going to be taste tests because I'm not going to be cooking everything that we eat. There are going to be things that will be purchased and they might be sentimental things that I have had since my childhood and I want to share with my kids or it might be really 
weird things, or at least things that people might think are weird. They might not be weird to me, but they might be weird to others. So I'd love to know if you think they're weird or not. Maybe you all think it's totally normal too. I don't know. But that will all be under taste test. We'll be trying new foods. We'll be introducing different things. That will be that. So I hope you'll join my journey of trying to figure out this struggle of how we live out this multi-ethnic identity and raising children in this. So hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Matane!